live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. Well, investigators in the Suzanne Simpson missing persons case continue to look for big clues at the bottom of a big hole. They have been digging for days at a landfill in southeast Bear County. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. This is now day four of the investigators being out there. Day three of them actively searching. Katrina, is there any indication of how long this will go on? Well, almost Park Police Chief Fidel Viega said earlier this week that they could be out here all week. Now, my guess is that they will be here until they find something or exhaust all possibilities. Now, this is at least the third place that they have searched uh, in the Suzanne Simpson disappearance. This morning, we noticed investigators picking up and taking photos of what looked like a blanket or tarp that they pulled from the trash pile. Now, we don't know yet whether this is, in fact, any evidence in this case. We could also tell one one thing based on the heights of those investigators and when they climb down into the hole that that hole is now at least five to six feet deep. In a previous statement, Chief Viegas said evidence and statements had led them to search this area and that he felt confident they may find Suzanne Simpson here. The mother of four realtor was reported missing last week by her husband. Police say a neighbor told them he saw the husband, 53 year old Brad Simpson, assault his wife. Then he heard screams now, coming from the woods near their home. Brad Simpson is in jail on family violence charges, but he also faces a federal charge related to an illegal weapon. At this time, I should point out that he is not facing any charges in connection with his wife's disappearance, but the police did say that he is not cooperating in this investigation. Now, this part of the investigation, the search, again, is expected to go on uh, all week. We're going to stay here and bring you the latest and have any developments that should come up. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you for that live report. Well, San Antonio police need your help right now finding a missing 64 year old woman. We know these pictures are a little blurry, but do you recognize this woman? This is Anita Gomez and she was last seen around five yesterday near South New Braunfels and Pecan Valley Drive. Now Gomez was seen wearing a long sleeve red shirt there and some black leggings while using a red and black walker. She's 5'1 and has brown hair and brown eyes. So anyone with any information on the missing woman, you are asked to call 911 or that number on your screen 207-7660. And let's look out there with a live cam this afternoon's a very nice morning. Oh. Those of us just waiting for the fall like weather, waiting for the <laughs> fall like weather. It actually was the coolest morning here in San Antonio that we have seen in 178 days. The last time we had a morning as cool as what we saw earlier today was back on April 22nd. Take a look at low temperatures in and around the San Antonio area this morning. Again, 54 degrees is where we started off this Thursday in the Alamo City. Check out portions of the hill country. You managed to dip down into the 40s in places like Bandera, Bernie, Comfort and Kerrville. So likely needed the jacket earlier this morning, but you were not going to need it into this afternoon. We've got plenty of sunshine out there right now. I think we could see a few more passing clouds develop later on today. Yesterday we topped off at 77 degrees officially, which is below average today. Just a few degrees warmer, but still below the average of 82 forecast high just shy of the 80 degree mark here in town. Then we'll start to see those temperatures fall into the pleasant mid 70s by 7 p.m. and already into the upper 60s by 10 p.m. later on tonight. Now moving forward, still cool tomorrow morning and nice into the afternoon. So we're gradually going to see a warming trend take back over into the upcoming weekend. In terms of rain chances, unfortunately very minimal, just a stray chance in the forecast this weekend. The vast majority of South Central Texas looking to miss out and that is unfortunately not great news. We did get a new drought monitor update in this morning drought does worsen. We're going to show you those changes coming up in just a few stuff. Yeah. Well, the woman charged in a deadly dog attack that took the life of a one year old boy will be in court later this afternoon, but not for her criminal charges. Heather Rodriguez will be in a civil court today for a dangerous dog hearing. Now, Bear County spokesperson told KSET that the reason for the hearing was for Rodriguez to explain why she was not willing to surrender two of the three dogs that she owned. She did surrender one dog that was directly involved in the attack. A judge today will determine whether Rodriguez must hand them over and also if they are deemed dangerous. Rodriguez was babysitting one-year-old Jariah Johnson and left the child alone with her 13-year-old daughter when the two were attacked earlier this month. 
Now, Rodriguez is facing numerous charges, including injury to a child causing serious bodily injury. And as of right now, the dogs have not been euthanized. Well, Light the Night is happening this weekend and this morning. KSET hosted a phone bank with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to help raise money for blood cancer. Well, during the phone bank, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society made $1,550. KSET has a goal of getting $5,000 donated, and we are 33% there. So since its inception 75 years ago, more than $1.7 billion in life-saving research has been raised in search for a cure. More than a third of blood cancer patients, however, do not survive five years after their diagnosis. I think the reason we come back every year is because we like to get our family together. Um, we're looking for a, reason, a way to help people who have also been through similar situations. Um, and we just want to make our dad proud. We know he's proud of us. And we're just looking for an outlet to help people who have been through what our family's been through. Well, join us this weekend at Hemisphere Park for Light the Night and see by our very own Daniela Ibarra. Hundreds of lanterns will illuminate the sky again Saturday, October 19th to celebrate, honor, and remember people impacted by blood cancer. You can check out ksatcommunity.com for the complete information. Well, we have new details regarding a shooting that killed a man at a Northside store last night. So that man has been identified as 20-year-old Chance Gorlowitz. According to police, three people showed up to a business on San Pedro Avenue near Bassey Road and began firing inside the store. Gorlowix was pronounced dead at the scene. The last suspect wanted in San Antonio murder case has been arrested. Justin Eaton is charged in the death of Javier Perez, who was shot and killed as he was leading a basketball gym outside Brooks Inner City Sports in April. Now, the two other suspects, Glenn McGarity and Deontay Sobitz Robertson, have also been charged with murder. They are in federal custody after an investigation into an armored truck robbery that happened two weeks after the shooting. New at noon, we just got the name and the mugshot of a local teacher that is facing drug-related charges after she was arrested on campus. So this happened yesterday at Martin Elementary School within Northside ISD. So this is 37-year-old Jessica Morales. The district police took her into custody, custody on that drug-related charge. We have been told that Morales taught fifth grade and was hired back in August of 2019. We are also told her arrest did not involve any students or other staff members at Martin Elementary. And before we go to break, Dog Talk is happening later tonight, and here's how it works. So you scan that QR code on your screen and ask any medical question concerning you, your child, or a loved one. And the doctor will be here in studio to answer it. Dog Talk airs every Thursday on the news at 6.30. Well, still ahead, the two major shortages the U.S. is facing following Hurricane Helene and Milton. Plus, former One Direction star Liam Payne has tragically died. We are hearing parts of the 911 call made moments before he passed. Well, shock and sadness in the music world today following the death of former One Direction bandmate Liam Payne. The 31-year-old pronounced dead at a hotel in Argentina last night. And we're now hearing the 911 calls made by the hotel manager moments before. ABC's Rena Roy has more, including how fans are reacting. Fans mourning around the world after the death of former One Direction member Liam Payne. People singing together outside a hotel in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where the 31-year-old fell roughly 40 feet from his third-floor hotel room last night. Medics pronouncing the pop star dead at the scene. I can't explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm shaking. Reports say Payne had been acting aggressively and erratically in the hotel's lobby moments before the tragedy. Audio obtained by the Associated Press revealing this 911 call by the hotel manager in Spanish saying Payne had drugs and alcohol and was breaking everything in his room. The manager saying he was scared for Payne's life. Y necesitamos que nos envíen alguien urgente porque, bueno, yo no sé si corre riesgo la vida del huésped. Está en una habitación que tiene balcón y... Payne had been in Argentina since early October when he went to his former One Direction bandmate Niall Horan's concert sharing this photo.
The band came together after Payne and the four other members auditioned for the British singing competition show The X Factor in 2010. When the band split, Payne emerged as a solo artist. You know I used to be in Wandy, he opened up about his sobriety and mental health last July, revealing he had been sober for six months after receiving treatment. It's good to be in this position, and yeah, I definitely don't need those things anymore. The party's over. Payne leaves behind his seven-year-old son, Bear. His family releasing a statement saying, We are heartbroken. Liam will forever live in our hearts and will remember him for his kind, funny, and brave soul. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, here at home, let's look out there with a live cam. It's a nice 68 degrees, and what a beautiful morning for those of us waiting to wear a sweater. Yes, we've been talking about that all morning. It was sweater weather this morning. Definitely a layering day, though. You needed that extra layer earlier this morning. High temperature is still headed for about 80 degrees this afternoon, so not needing that extra layer as much. Wish, unfortunately, we were able to see a little bit more rain, or at least rain chances in the forecast. We need it. The aquifer is down almost half of a foot this Thursday at 625.8. In terms of today's pollen count, molds actually climb into the moderate category at 550. Ragweed still moderate at 270. Pigweed is also present, but the good news is it is low. We're going to have another full check at that forecast coming right up. Well, after not one, but two major hurricanes, the U.S. faces some shortages. The Biden administration is invoking the Defense Production Act because the nation's IV fluid supply is critically low. Meanwhile, the Small Business Administration's disaster loan program is out of money. Officials say that is after about 49,000 recent applications. People can still apply and Congress can approve more funds after its recess. FEMA says it has enough money for now. However, ongoing spread of misinformation about operations is not okay. It has got to stop. Well, the agency says false rumors are making it harder to get relief funds to hurricane survivors and a lot of damage left behind. And, and some people are like closely still watching the tropics after all this. You can see why. I mean, the Sunshine State alone had to deal with Helene. And then just a couple weeks later, it had to deal with Milton. So I think it just goes to show that, yes, we are still in hurricane season and we definitely can still see these systems impact parts of the United States. I do want to show you the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Just to kind of put a bow on it, you can see there are a few areas that have just been given a low chance for tropical development over the next week. One that's approaching the Lesser Antilles that's going to head towards the Caribbean and then another one just to the south of the Yucatan Peninsula. As of right now, those do not pose any issues for the Lone Star State or even uh, the Gulf Coastline. We will, of course, continue to keep you posted on that, though, in the weeks ahead. Hurricane season officially running through November 30th this year. Back here at home, I do want to talk about the drought situation because it continues to worsen, unfortunately, thanks to the fact that we haven't even recorded any rain over the past 42 days here in town. You can see this is actually last week's drought monitor update. We did have severe drought that expanded into Bear County. I want to go ahead and fade on this morning's update, and you can see that has continued to expand farther off to the south as well as the east. We even have moderate drought that is now encompassing the far eastern reaches of our area near Hallettsville, Gonzales, stretching down to Quero and this pocket of extreme drought that we've been monitoring across portions of the hill country has also widened now stretching into the far northwestern reaches of Bear County. I wish we could say that we had better rain chances in the forecast again at least over the next seven days. Nothing significant just a 10% chance in the forecast as we look ahead to the upcoming weekend. Today marks day number 42 consecutive days without measurable rainfall here in San Antonio so far for the month of October, we just unfortunately haven't seen anything. And when you compare that to the average so far through October 17th, that's about two inches below where we should be for this time in the month. Also keep in mind, October is on average our third wettest month out of the year here in town for the year. 21.3 is what we've seen to date. That's over five inches below where we should be. We know that it's taking a toll on those in the agricultural business, obviously with the drought situation. Even take a look at how some of our area reservoirs are responding 
responding. Medina Lake down to under 3% full now. Choke Canyon 18.4% full. That's almost 32 feet below the conservation pool. And again, the vast majority of our area missing out on anything over at least the next seven days. We just have that minimal 10% chance for a stray shower in the forecast tomorrow, Saturday and into Sunday. I want to go ahead and show you why. Again, here's that front that moved through yesterday. It has cleared the state of Texas. Beautiful conditions in store right now. That will continue into this afternoon as well. There's an area of low pressure over the Pacific Northwest. That's going to start to work its way farther off to the southeast over the next couple of days. We see some additional humidity work into our neck of the woods. That's why we have just that very stray chance for a shower in the forecast. Unfortunately, instead of moving due east, it works its way farther up to the northeast, so we don't get as much of the energy and lift here at home that we would need to see better rain chances. Instead, we have a high pressure system moving back in, which we know oftentimes than not leaves us pretty dry. But in the meantime, at least it feels fantastic out there this Thursday afternoon. 68 degrees right now here in San Antonio, 72 in New Braunfels, mid 60s for places like Bernie, as well as Kerrville. Partly cloudy skies expected later on this afternoon, 79 degrees, the forecast high temperature in town. If you're stepping out for any Thursday evening plans or football games, it is going to feel fantastic. 75 by 7 p.m. temperatures falling into the upper 60s later on tonight. Tomorrow morning, not quite as cool, but still below average stuff. Then we'll start to see those warm back up into the mid to even upper 60s next week as we start to see more of the moisture pump back in. All right, at least it's not 90s. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Well, coming up in sports, what UT head coach Steve Sarkeesian has to say to his team ahead of their big game against Georgia this weekend. Plus, the excitement Texans quarterback CJ Stroud has ahead of the Texans game against the Packers this weekend, how he is preparing for the game. Well, Texans quarterback C.J. Stroud is all set to play at Historic Lambeau Field. Stroud said he can't wait and that it's going to be an honor to play. So at 5-1 and 1, C.J. Stroud and the Texans lead the AFC South by two games. The Packers are 4-1 and one and sit third in the NFC North, perhaps the toughest division because every team has a winning record. Well, Stroud is a very confident player and having two guys around him like running back Joe Mixon and wide receiver Stephon Diggs gives him even more confidence to go out and play good football. When Steph and Joe came here, um, they were just like, man, like you got it, bro. Like you just, you have what it takes because, I mean, we've been around it, you know, these past couple of years being around Burrow and, and Josh Allen. So, um, you know, and they're not comparing me to those guys, I don't think, but, you know, they're just telling me like I have that aura, I have that, um, that way I carry myself, you know, and I, so I thought that was pretty cool because I never really heard that before, uh, especially with two guys who've been around some, some really successful quarterbacks. So I thought that was pretty cool. The Texans will take on the Green Bay Packers Sunday at noon. Well, led by head coach Steve Sarkeesian, top-ranked Texas will host fifth-ranked Georgia on Saturday night. So the Bulldogs are 5-1 and one overall this season and 3-1 and one in the SEC, while Texas is 6-0 and 2-0 and and in conference. So on Monday, Horns head coach Steve Sarkeesian was asked what his message is to the team this week. The message didn't change at all today, and I and again, I like I said, I believe in consistency and messaging. Um, you know, when we start conference play, the first thing I talk about this is an SEC championship game. You know, every week we play this this league. We have no divisions. Um, there's a lot of teams, and and any blemish on your record could potentially knock you out of that that championship game. And so we think of every game that way, whether it's Mississippi State, Oklahoma, now now Georgia. Um, the, the messaging stays very consistent on a lot of the things that we talk about because I think the players appreciate consistency. All right, we agree there. Consistency is key. So Texas will host Georgia Saturday night at 630. And don't forget, you can watch that live right here on Case at 12. And UT is favored by five points. Go Horns. Still ahead in our next half hour, Election Day is just around the corner and we have the important dates and the times that you need to know when it comes to early voting and Election Day. Plus what the Federal Trade Commission is doing to make canceling a subscription easier than it has been. Well, if you've ever felt like canceling a subscription was way harder than it should be, that 
should be changing soon. So the Federal Trade Commission just issued a new rule to make it a lot easier to say goodbye to unwanted services. So our Ivan Areta is here with all the details. And of course, all of us want to know, will this be immediate? Yes, good afternoon. Well, not necessarily. Well, the FTC is cracking down on these tricky subscriptions, working to make it simpler for consumers to cancel. But you will have to wait a little bit for those full effects to take effect of the rule. Now, the new click to cancel rule requires businesses to make canceling a subscription as easy as signing up. No more jumping through hoops or dealing with confusion, confusing options to end those memberships. The rule also forces companies to be upfront about when those free trials or promotional offers will end. I know they offer them 30 days, 15 days, seven days. Plus, they have to get your cons clear consent before charging you for auto renewals or extended membership. Now, most of these changes will take take effect in 180 days, which is six months after that rule has been published in the Federal Register. The FTC chair, Lena Khan, says that this new rule is all about saving Americans time and money, putting a stop to what she calls, quote, tricks and traps, end quote, and that will make canceling harder and it makes canceling harder than it should be. Now, the rule is part of a bigger push from the Biden administration to reduce everyday hassles for consumers from health care to subscriptions like uh, gym subscriptions with its time. Time is money initiative. Now, some aren't happy about this new rule. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce argues that these kinds of regulations will lead to higher prices for consumers. But this new rule could make life a lot easier for us consumers who are feeling trapped in yeah. a subscription. They no longer want to be part of these subscriptions. And sometimes it's just really hard to get over these subscriptions. <laughs> so watch for those changes in six months. And uh, some changes will take effect in about, I think it's, I saw 60 days. So a few changes, but the full rule will be 180 days. Of course, somebody could sue and try to stop this rule, oh, wow. but we don't, we don't know that yet, you know? Well, so. I hope it. I hope it goes through because it, it for not all of be them. Be great but, for but, consumers, yeah, for but sure. A, but a lot of them, you know, are are kind of tricky, and then, <laughs> and it makes you sometimes it makes you not even want to sign up. Right, 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 right. Like, yeah. And then, uh, well, you know, and then for me, I'm sure we all have like a dozen stories. I, I went in there and I specifically asked, I was like, hey, how, how can I cancel this, you know, and down the line. Definitely. I'm like, oh, you just have to call. And then I call, they're like, oh, no, you have to show up here in person. And I had something blah, 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 blah. happen to that. So, something like <laughs> right? that happened to me this week. So I was uh, really uh, upset about it. But, you know, was, let's hope that this makes it easier for everybody. We sure hope so. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Ivan. <laughs> let's look out there with live cam this afternoon. I just feel like everybody is just in a happy mood because Happier of that 68 degrees. because of the weather. <laughs> hey, and back to the subscriptions right? too. You know, I have two or three that I've just hit the pause button on because it is so hard to actually cancel the subscriptions, but sometimes they'll give you the option, oh, do you just want to pause for a month? And I have a few of them that I just keep pausing yeah. because I haven't actually gone and canceled them. It's been going on for a few years, so I probably should look into that. Thanks, <laughs> Ivan, for, for the info. Okay, so we do know that we have a few clouds starting to work back in after a morning of beautiful sunshine, cooler temperatures here in San Antonio. There were a few clouds in a few spots last night, but a few of you managed to capture the almost near full hunter's moon. This is October's full moon. It officially became full at 6. 26 a.m. earlier this morning. If you're wanting to catch another glimpse of it this evening, moonrise is going to be around 7 11 p.m. You're going to want to look off to the east northeast as it starts to rise in the south central Texas sky. We'll have partly cloudy skies later on this evening, but you still should be able to see that big, bright, beautiful hunter's moon. And if you were curious how it got its name, it was named after the hunting and the preparation that would take place this time of year in the northern hemisphere ahead of the winter season. And we do have a few photos that we're sending to KSAT Connect. I love this one in between the tree branches there. Peekaboo is the caption. This one is gorgeous, sent in from Converse. Cooler night and a beautiful big moon. Very fall-like. And, and of course, the comet that we still have a few more chances to see. One this evening, about 40 minutes after sunset, which occurs at 7 p.m. So look in between about 7.40 to 8 o'clock. The western horizon, just to the right of Venus, which we know is that bright star. Uh, you can use binoculars to help if you would like. But again, a few more clouds this evening compared to what we've seen the past several. We're going to talk about these cooler temperatures, how long they're going to stick around and more in depth coming up in just a few.
Thank you, Mia. Well, we are just 18 days away now from the 2024 election, and there are some important things that voters need to know before we get to that big day. So first of all, early voting begins on Monday, October 21st, and that's going to go through November 1st. So to request a ballot, you need to contact the Bear County Elections Department and that number on your screen, 210-335-8683. Election day is November 5th and polling sites on election day will be open from seven in the morning until seven in the evening. In 2010, 10,471 people lived in Bernie proper. And as of 2022, according to the Census Bureau, 21,000 people live in Bernie. So it's almost doubled over 10 years. For a lot of people, they do worry about that growth and whether it is sustainable. It's pretty easy to figure out why people want to live here. This place is beautiful. It's super green and the people are friendly. There are lots of nice little cute shops around town. The question is, what's motivating people here to vote this November? That's what we're going to find out. So manually, we're like, we're so short on any of our blue collar um, plumbing, everything, plumbers, electricians, Electric, yes. mechanics. If you talk to anybody that's trying to build anything, it's near impossible to get the foreign policy side. I think we're just so weak right now. That worries me. I don't want to see my grandkids going to war. I think we're weak there. We're not taking the right path there. Well, that is just a taste of some of the conversations that we have with people there in Bernie. You can scan that QR code there at the bottom of your screen to watch Episode 7 of Your Voice South Texas. The series is KSET's effort to go out into different communities and hear about the issues affecting you right before the election. So we also have a shot of episodes in Uvalde, Seguin, Pleasanton, Lavernia, New Braunfels, and Kerrville. One 18-year-old suspect that Bear County deputies were looking for in connection to a car theft ring has been caught. So last week, we told you about a countywide car theft bust in which deputies arrested three people at two different locations. However, they were still searching for one more suspect, and that is 18-year-old Ashton Garcia. After a massive chop shop bust yesterday, deputies say Garcia has been arrested and charged. Investigators say they found more than $2 million worth of stolen cars connected to that operation in South Bear County. And before we go to break, Doc Talk again happening later tonight. So here's how it works. You scan that QR code on your screen, ask any medical question that's going to concern you, your child or a loved one, and the doctor will be here to answer it. So Doc Talk airs every Thursday on the news at 630. Still ahead, the lawsuit that Spurs star Victor Wimbayana has filed against a man making his own Spurs merchandise. Well, Spurs superstar Victor Wimbayama has filed a lawsuit against a man for using his name and likeness without permission. So in that lawsuit, Wimbayama's attorneys accuse James T. Gladich of filing a trademark application for L. Wimby, branded sweatshirts and t-shirts. Now, the lawsuit also accuses Gladich of filing a trademark application for Wimby's world branded clothing for retail purposes. The lawsuit also says Wimbayama's attorney sent multiple cease and desist letters to Gladich and right now on KSET.com. You can also read why Wimbayama's attorneys also claim Gladich is violating Wimby's privacy. Interesting. That is interesting. I'm interested to see how all that pans out, too, yeah. kind of moving forward. All right, back here in San Antonio as we take a look outside with live cam. We do have a few clouds that are starting to stream in from the west, but other than that, very, very pleasant. If you're about to step out for any Thursday lunchtime plans or early afternoon plans, low humidity still in place, so that adds to the comfortableness factor when you do step outside. Again, 54 degrees, our low temperature earlier this morning, the coolest morning that we have seen since late April. We've got a forecast high just shy of 80 degrees here in town. That will be below average, the average 82, and thankfully, unlike what we saw earlier this week, well below the record of 96 that was set back in 1993. We'll have another full check of that forecast coming right up. Originally called Mary 
Mary's gold. The marigold is named after the Virgin Mary, but in Mexico, it's called Sempasuchi, the flower of the dead. Placed on graves and used to decorate altars during the Day of the Dead, it's believed the flower's vibrant colors and strong scent can lure souls back to the living. Since they bloom in early summer and die at fall's first frost, they also symbolize the fragility of life. The name Sempasuchi is Aztec and roughly translated to flower of many petals. For the Aztecs, the flower was sacred and its bright color represented the sun. Native to the Americas, it was cultivated for decorative, magical, medicinal, and agricultural purposes. And they were thought to cure hiccups and were often planted near crops. As a matter of fact, the marigold produces a natural insecticide. Once Spanish explorers discovered the hardy plant, they took the seeds back to Europe. Now hundreds of varieties grow across the globe, including India, where the marigold has become an important ceremonial flower. For Hindus, the marigold symbolizes surrender to the divine. Next weekend. Next weekend for Muertos Fest. Got a lot happening over the next couple of weeks. I believe Light the Night is this Saturday. Then we have that. So a lot of exciting yeah. things. And, and you know, cooler. <laughs> and, and cooler. And, you know, looking ahead, even into next week, it does look like we could potentially see, you know, temperatures stay a little bit warmer than average. So we'll have to keep tabs on that. Uh, but today, enjoy it because it is beautiful out there. Uh, 26 years ago today, though, I do want to talk about a little bit of a different story here. It was not the same. In fact, this day in weather history back in 1998, the flood of 98 would begin 11.26 inches found in one day here in San Antonio. Over the course of the event, over 15 and a half total inches of rain. So you can see why all of the flooding issues would quickly uh, come to pass here with this particular storm system, the damage $1.19 million. So this is one of the costlier floods in history. And unfortunately, 31 people lost their life because of those rising flood waters. So not great. Of course, something we continue to look back on every October 17th. And we never want flooding like that, of course. But I, I wish at least we were able to find a few more decent rain chances in the forecast right now. Just very minimal. 10%, 20% at best tomorrow, Saturday into Sunday, and then potentially as we head into the middle portions of next week. But for the most part, we are going to stay dry and quiet here in South Central Texas. And even looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook issued by the Climate Prediction Center, looking ahead to the back half of the month of October, we are near either close to average or expected to see below average rainfall. So that also isn't good news when we look ahead to the second half of the month. But of course, we will continue to keep you posted. Hopefully we see a little bit more of a pattern change, some more moisture to work with and maybe a few more fronts headed our direction. But again, as of right now, things not looking as good as they could be for this time of year when it comes to the rainfall department. At least it feels good outside thanks to the lower humidity, the cooler air that we've seen move in in the wake of yesterday morning's cold front. If you missed it, here's a look at low temperatures across the region. Again, 54 here in San Antonio. It was a little chilly to kickstart the day, especially up in the hill country. Mid 40s for places like Kerrville, Fredericksburg, stepping over into Junction. A little bit warmer the farther south and west that you went. Catula started off this Thursday at 63. It was 64 earlier this morning over in Del Rio. Tomorrow, still cool and actually below average. Upper 50s is where we're going to kickstart our Friday. We are above average into the upcoming weekend as we start to see more humidity work back in, and that will continue continue to be the theme even into next week as well. Let's talk about the return of that humidity right now. Dew points in the 40s for the most part across the board. That is dry out there. That's why it feels more comfortable whenever you do step outside. One of the reasons why temperatures will also able to drop a little bit more this morning. We will start to see more humidity work back in by the end of the day tomorrow and even more so into the upcoming weekend, which is one of the reasons why low temperatures are expected to come up a touch and we also will 
see more added cloud cover return. But in the meantime, very nice out there. Upper 60s here in town, 74 degrees right now. The temperature in Pleasanton, partly cloudy skies expected later on today. 80 degrees right around that. The forecast high temperature here in town. Then we'll start to see those temperatures fall through the 70s and into the 60s later on tonight. Great for Thursday evening plans. High temperatures also warming up a touch as we head into next week. Low 80s this weekend, mid to upper 80s into next week, Steph. Thank you, Mia. Still okay. We can handle the 80s. Yes. Well, coming up, SA Live is showing us a behind the scenes look at some sweet treats being made right here in San Antonio. So we are told that these are treats that will make you say OMG. Well, Fiona Gorsitsa from SA Live visits a local snack shop making over the top treats to satisfy any craving. What, what, what is this creation? Ford, Ford, Ford in the car. Well, you've seen them on the show, but now we have come to them. We are here at Sammy's Snacks, and joining me is Samantha Castillo. And I love the cute little vibe you guys have here. Yes, yeah, so basically, um, we actually did everything ourselves. Um, actually, one of my vendor friends gave us the gummy bears that have been an excellent touch to, to our shop. And inflatable gummies are yes, so cute. they are so cute. Her fiance came in the grand opening and she, he just brought them to me and I was like, perfect, that's what we were missing. Right. So, and um, I love the little selfie wall. Yeah, the selfie wall, we also created that. It's like foil just and it's foil. just a fun, cute little vibe for like selfies. And here we have a word search. So we have six word services like Sammy Snacks. And, <laughs> And this wall, we just try to incorporate a little bit more of like my hometown. I have a picture of my hometown, where and, I'm from. And that's significant because? Because that is where everything started. So um, I'm from West Rico, Texas. So um, when I moved to San Antonio back in 2013, there was nothing like home here. So I brought home to San, to San Antonio. So um, I started, you know, making my chamoy candies and all that, and that's why you know having home here is very significant to me bringing a little bit of taste yes, right of home of okay let's talk about some of the most popular items here some of the popular snacks what is this creation so this is called the um the maruchan preparada so that that's that's a cup of noodles right Isn't yeah it? it's a cup of noodles okay and it um it comes with corn it comes with um, some chili powders in there uh, with with uh, Parmesan cheese, Valentina, and it also comes with chips. So these are our tostaditas verdes, um, but you could select oh, any wow. of these chips with that. Wow, any of those? Yeah. You can put, you can choose to yep. put here. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of customize. Yeah, you can basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and this is really one of our top sellers because it's very flavorful. Well, and it's such a great presentation too. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that, okay? And then we've got this right here, And right? then we have our mangonada. Mm -hmm. So our mangonada has um, our significant uh, chamoy. So, you know, our homemade chamoy. And we also include like gummies into the mangonada just so it could give it that extra flavor to it. And I mean, this is definitely like another top seller of ours. <laughs> All right, here's one of my favorites right here. Oh, uh, the corn in the cup. Corn in the cup. Yes. Uh, that's another top seller. So um, the corn in the cup. Corn in the cup. It's our uh, yellow corn. Um, but it's also like a really sweet corn, really good. When you mix it with all the ingredients, it's just very flavorful, flavorful. and people tend to love our corn in a cup. Corn in a cup. Yes. Well, and that's a nice serving too. Right yes. There, right? yes. Yes. Okay, and as far as your drizzle goes, you've got those right here, right? Yes, so we do have um, regular chamoy, we have watermelon, mango, and pickle. These are very good, like to when you want to have them at home. But we also have our keychains. Mm -hmm. That our keychains, we have the, all the flavors as those as well. And keychains are good to travel because they are TSA approved. So you could take them with you wherever oh, you go. Wherever you go, you got yes. these at home with you. <laughs> yes, of oh course. Oh my gosh! And you have some prepackaged snacks too. Yes. So these are our large candies. Um, these will be our sour belts. We also have mango bites and cherry bombs and the ones that come with four those are our variety packs so we 
tend to have variety packs for um, our top filler candy. So if per, uh, someone doesn't want to buy one only, they, they could get like a little variety pack with our top filler candy. All right, so tell folks where you're located. So we are located um, on 7222 Blanco Road off of 410 in Blanco. Yeah. All right, well thank you so much for more information on Sammy's Snacks. All you have to do is head to our website, salive.com and click on the Ask Me on SA Live tab or just scan that QR code on your screen. Or to the car. <laughs> All right, let's get you one final look at current conditions outside. Now up to 73 pleasant degrees here in San Antonio, still upper 60s in Bernie. We've got a little bit more cloud cover working in. That'll continue into this afternoon. A afternoon high near 80 degrees here in town, then pleasant for any evening plan. 75 by 7 p.m. Upper 60s later on tonight. Tomorrow morning, cool, but not as cool as what we saw earlier today. Morning lows will start to warm back up into next week, as well as daytime highs and just that small, very minimal chance for a stray shower over the next couple of days, Steph. Well, I know it's warming up, but that's okay. I'll take the 60s and the 80s. Me the too. It's a, it's a good range. Yes, and we have some visitors we want to show you right now. Uh, this is Vineyard Ranch Elementary Broadcasting joining us today. Thank you so much for watching Case at 12.